Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another Make Shop Pro video. Today we're going to be creating our own classic studio portrait background. So recently, given the whole current situation that we're navigating, um, I have needed to actually take my kids' own portrait uh, photos for school. And to try to kind of give it more of that classic uh, portrait look, apart from studio-esque lighting, uh, is to have like one of those kind of, you know, colored but textured backgrounds. Uh, so I had to create one of those and I figured it might be good uh, to create a quick tutorial on that just in case you find yourself in that situation or wanting to do something similar for other family members or whatnot. Uh, so, so let's get into that. To start off, I'm just going to create a new image and just, I mean, this is not a realistic uh, proportion uh, for an actual photograph, but just for the sake of demo, I'm just going to do a thousand by thousand. And really to start off, you just want to kind of have some idea of what uh, color scheme you're going to go with. And my recommendation is to uh, pick three uh, different colors, uh, you know, and have, have like a dark color, a mid-tone color, and a light color. Uh, and then and then we'll see how it kind of all overlays together. Uh, but just kind of have something in mind. I'm going to do something that's sort of like a, like a purple-pink sort of transition. So uh, to start off, all we need to do is use the Fill tool. So can uh, just click on this right here and then select whatever color you want. So I'll pick sort of this, since this is going to be my dark color and I want it to be a purple, I'll pick sort of a darker color. And then we can just click on the background and fill the whole thing. So now for the next color, we'll want to create a new raster layer. So we can just click down here, click on new raster layer. And then we're going to use the standard brush, but we're going to, we're going to modify it a little bit. So to do this, what we want to do is go to View, Toolbars, and then go to, sorry, go to Palettes, and we want to go to Brush Variants. So if you, if you already have this up, uh, then just go to it. If you don't normally have it up, you'll want to go to that, uh, that menu like I showed. And really what we're, only what we're wanting to do is just change the position jitter to something pretty significant. It doesn't have to be fully maxed out. You'll want to play with it. Um, and you'll also want to make sure that none of these other things are set to any pressure sensitive stuff because we only want um, variability just based on the position. So now that we have that set, we can pick our next color. So now for like my mid-tone, I wanted something maybe a little bit more in like the pinkish realm. And since we have that brush variance uh, set up, uh, we can use, you can see that my brush size is fairly small relative to the canvas. You can also bring the hardness down just so that it kind of, you know, blends in when we draw it. And then if you just drag with this brush variance, you can see what it's kind of doing. Now, I think I want my size a little bit larger. That might be a little too large. Um, but really what you're trying to do is just, you can even decrease the opacity, but you're really just trying to kind of like create some texture in a way. And it doesn't have to be too crazy because we're going to be blurring this eventually anyway. But but just a little bit of dragging just to create some texture. Now, if you're if you're wanting to create like a natural vignette, then you'll want to kind of put a little bit more emphasis in the middle because you want your essentially what you're doing is biasing more of that bright color to be in the middle and there's this natural darkness on the corners because there's more purple there. So once you have that in place, we'll go to our next raster layer and then you'll want your even lighter color. So maybe I'll do something like this really light pink here and maybe even make the size a little bit less. And then do the same thing, right? We're just gonna paint some, and again, if the, if the spread seems a little bit too much for you, you can always go back to the brush variants and then decrease that jitter. And if you decrease the jitter, then it won't spread as much. So you can see now I can kind of keep it a little bit more concentrated in the middle. 
So now that we've got our three layers with all of this, uh, you know, pattern on it, if you, as long as you're kind of happy with where that's at, what we can do is we can go back to the pan or the hand looking tool. And this approach is just so that if you need to go back and fix things, you still can, but we're going to copy merge and then control L to paste it as a new layer. So then we have this whole thing as a layer here. And what we're going to do is just go to adjust blur Gaussian blur. And then you'll want, you'll want it to be pretty generous. Uh, but, but you don't, you, you want to still kind of see that variation of the color, like the, the three different colors. But if you go too low, then you're going to see a lot of that, that, you know, very specific detail of the dot. So, you know, just play with the blur until it gets to like the level of, of, you know, mixture of colors and fidelity that you're looking for. I think I'm, I'm okay with this one here. So now this this gets pretty close, I think, to what you what you experience when you see like, you know, these kinds of fancy backgrounds uh, being generated. But but one attribute that I felt like it really brings it all together is adding a specific texture. So, for example, uh, I have this texture here, which I got from textures.com. And you'll see it's like a it's a leather too seamless and you can see it's got like a lot of uh, you know grain and whatnot and so what we can do is we can just copy this guy and then once again paste as a new layer with control L and then we're just going to change its blend layer to soft light and then what we'll see is that that now gives like the whole thing a little bit more fidelity, right? It just gives it this sort of texture and it doesn't make it feel like it's just a blurred image, but it actually has some, uh, you know, sharpness to it or whatnot. And if it feels like the grain or the texture itself is a little bit too strong, you can always throttle it back with the, by adjusting the opacity. So now looking at this, I feel like the actual color layer could be blurred a little bit more. So we'll go back to Gaussian blur, maybe apply just a little bit more so that that pattern isn't quite so obvious now that I can see the texture with it. And we're, we're nearly there. And so, you know, if you wanted to, because of the way we picked the, the darks, to the light colors, there's a natural gradient of brights to darks to the corner. But if you wanted to add a little bit more control there, you could use, you could create a new layer and then use like a gradient, a gradient fill property uh, in the circular pattern. And as you can see, this, this gradient just goes from true black to full transparent. And then we can use the fill tool to apply that. And then once again, set the blend layer to soft light and then dial it back if you, if you feel like it's a little too strong. Now as well, you might look at this and say, oh, you know, the colors might be a little bit too intense, you know, for and it'll take away from uh, the, the focus on the subject. So uh, in that case, you can always add an adjustment layer of vibrancy and then just apply like a little bit of negative number-esque, right? Just to, just to kind of mute it a little bit so it's not quite so strong. So then from here, you can just add your subject, right? So for example, I got this uh, photo from uh, pexels.com. Isolated the subject just so that we don't have to uh, go through that process. Uh, and since it kind of doesn't, like I mentioned before, fit uh, exactly the, the shape of the image as I created the background, uh, we can just use the crop tool to kind of fit that a little bit better. And there you have it. You can you can do a few other things too if you want to kind of simulate a little bit more of a shadow, you know, cast onto the background or whatnot. But I created a few backgrounds and tried it, you know, in a few different cases or whatnot. And you can create uh, a number of different backgrounds, any color scheme you want. 
And you can also add variability by uh, using different textures. As always, if you have any questions or would like to suggest content, feel free to leave a comment. If you'd like to get updates of new videos that I post, click the subscribe button and you can check the video description for ways to support and engage the channel. And I'll see you guys next time.